The idea to create synthetic tissues and organs came almost by accident rather than design, but it's still a good idea. Sendaver products are made up of the same basic materials as you and I, water, fibers, and salts. And each synthetic tissue is designed to mimic the mechanical, thermal, and physicochemical properties of live tissue. We recreate every major tissue and organ system in the human body, and it takes about a thousand hours to create each synthetic human. Although Sendaver started with the creation of synthetic human tissues, we're now expanding into veterinary medicine. The Sendaver canine is going to be a highly complex uh, system that mimics every part of the animal. Uh, and you're going to be able to do a lot of different things with it. Trauma training, spays, veterinarians will be able to train in brain surgery with no risk to the animal because they've got this platform to, uh, to train on. I'm actually pretty blown away uh, at the realism. With the feel I saw, looking back on my education as a vet student going through the beginnings of surgery, the feel of the tissue was as real in this specimen as it was in a real animal. And this is a good stepping stone or beginning to teach somebody the basics on how to, you know, ligate a vessel, how to remove a spleen, but then move into, you know, the more specialized surgeries. And, and I think this will be a good replacement. This is the sophomore surgery spay neuter laboratory. These are sophomore veterinary students who are performing their very first spay or neuter. The Sendaver synthetic tissue is going to be the wave of the future. It's going to allow us to train veterinary students how to do procedures in a very realistic sort of way to better prepare them for the live dog experience they'll get when they get out in the real world. Sindaver Synthetic Canine is going to revolutionize veterinary medical education at the University of Florida. This type of technology helps us to become one of the leading institutions in academic veterinary medicine in the world. Canines are, are important not just because of pets, uh, but because they're used by the police and the military. Uh, the U.S. military and uh, U.S. police forces put uh, a great deal of effort and funding uh, into training uh, dogs to, to sniff out narcotics and work in combat, uh, find bombs, and they get hurt. Uh, when they do get hurt, they're treated just like a, a soldier or an officer. When you're looking at providing first responder care for canines, whether it's a military working canine or uh, some of our canine officers on the law enforcement side. The needs to train are exactly the same as the needs to train to save a, a human being. You need to have a realistic trainer that replicates the injury, that replicates the patient that you're working on, so that if you ever have to work on a canine officer or a canine military dog, those skills just come just as natural as they would putting the tourniquet on your colleague. This seems to be in a class by itself and uh, we'll probably rewrite uh, the books uh, in how we teach surgery in veterinary colleges. I see this type of technology being revolutionary in the fact that it'll replace live animal models. It's hard to go back to, to cadavers once I think one has worked with something like this. So I'm very, very impressed.